Today I'm going to show how to install a six element intercooler in a Hyundai Elantra N. This intercooler provides additional horsepower on the stock tune and better overall cooling performance. A link to the product will be in the video description. When the kit arrives, it will consist of the intercooler, two hoses, one for the cold side and one for the hot side, four clamps in three different sizes, a parts diagram, and a logo stencil. Before you begin this installation process, make sure the car's engine is cold. To begin, we need to remove the front bumper. Using a plastic trim tool, remove the six plastic push pins holding the top of the bumper to the car. Move over to the wheel well and remove the four plastic push pins and one 8mm bolt holding the side of the bumper to the car. Repeat this step on the opposite side of the car. I found it a little tricky to get my socket over the bolt, so I just used my Phillips head screwdriver to remove the bolt. At this point, you will want to lift at least one side of the car to gain access to the underside of the front bumper. After the car has been lifted, remove the seven push pins holding the bottom of the bumper to the car. The bumper is now ready to be removed from the car. Begin on each side of the bumper and gently pop the bumper away from the car, working towards the center grille. Hold onto the black area under each headlight and the top of the bumper to pop the grille section away from the car. Once each side has been popped off the car, you can lift up on the top of the bumper and pull the whole bumper off the car. One person can do this by themselves, but a second person is always good to ensure the bumper isn't dropped or damaged. With the bumper removed, we can begin removing the factory intercooler. I started by unplugging the ambient air sensor. Next, I removed the 10 millimeter bolts holding the intercooler shroud in place. To detach the shroud from the car, you'll need to use pliers and remove the air sensor's wire harness. To get access to the hot and cold pipes, you'll need to remove the splash shield. The splash shield is held into place by plastic push pins and four 10 millimeter bolts. After I remove the splash shield, I detach the hot side hose. The factory clamp has a small cover over the bolt that needs to be removed. The cold side clamps have these same covers that must be removed. I used a flathead screwdriver to pop the cover off the bolt. Loosen the bolt using an 8mm socket. Pull the silicone hose off the metal pipe. Sixth shows removing this hose off completely. I didn't find I needed to do this. Move over to the cold side 
and either loosen the hose going into the intercooler or remove the two 12 millimeter bolts holding the hose adapter to the intercooler. I chose to loosen the hose clamp and remove the hose. Due to the DCT transmission, there is not a lot of room to work. After both hoses have been detached, you can remove the four 10 millimeter bolts holding the intercooler in place. Then pull the intercooler off the car. The trickiest part of the install is removing and reattaching the top of the cold pipe hose. To loosen the clamp at the top of the cold pipe hose, I used an 8mm socket, joint socket adapter, and socket extension. After the clamp was loosened, I removed the hose. I had to work around the top of the hose with my fingers to break the seal that it had on the cold pipe. This took a bit of time and it was stuck on the pipe pretty good. Now that the factory intercooler and hoses were removed, we can install the new sixth intercooler. The hose that looks like an S is for the hot side, and the hose that looks like an L is for the cold side. The S, or hot hose, uses the two smaller clamps, while the L, or cold hose, uses the two larger clamps. Sixth shows installing the intercooler first and then the hoses. I chose to install the hoses first due to the difficulty of the cold hose. Slide one of the 67 to 75 millimeter clamps onto the top of the L-shaped cold hose. I don't show it in the video, but it's a good idea to rub some WD-40 on the inside of the hose to help slide it onto the cold pipe easier. Once on the cold pipe, I had my wife help hold the clamp in place while I used an electric wrench and 10 millimeter deep socket to tighten the clamp to the cold pipe. Again, this is a bit tricky as there is very little room in this area. After installing the cold hose, slide the other 67 to 75 millimeter clamp onto the other end of the cold hose. Next, mount the intercooler to the car. You will reuse the four 10 millimeter factory bolts that held the OEM intercooler in place. Sixth recommends torquing the bolts to seven foot pounds. This is hardly any torque. I tried torquing the bolts, but found just tightening them down by hand worked best. Slide the cold hose onto the intercooler and tighten the clamp. Move over to the hot side. The 54 to 62 millimeter clamp will go on the side that attaches to the factory hot pipe. The 60 to 68 millimeter clamp will go on the side that attaches to the intercooler. The way that I have the hose laid on the workbench in the video is the direction that the hose should be installed. After the hose has been installed, tighten both the clamps using a 10 millimeter deep socket. The last step is to plug the ambient temperature sensor back in. If you have any clearance issues, take your pliers and bend the bracket away from the intercooler. I found I didn't have any clearance issues. Finally, I removed some of the slack in the sensor's wiring harness. This is not required, but something I did just to tidy up the wires. At this point, the intercooler is finished, unless you want to paint the sixth logo on the intercooler. 
I did this on my wife's Veloster N, but chose not to do this for my car, at least at this time. I may do so in the near future. With the intercooler installed, you can reinstall the factory bumper and splash shield. Set the bumper back onto the car. Make sure the sides line up correctly with the headlights. Clip the top section in place and then begin snapping the sides back onto the car. Reinstall the six plastic clips that hold the top in place. Move to each side and reinstall the 8mm screw and four plastic clips. Finally, reinstall the splash shield. After installing the intercooler, I took the car out for some spirited driving. I noticed the car ran cooler, around 15 to 20 degrees cooler than normal, depending on my driving. I also noticed better takeoff performance from the car. The intercooler does provide additional horsepower without the need for a tune, but not a lot. Even though the power gain was small, the car definitely had better takeoff, especially as the RPMs increased, which was noticeable. This is a worthwhile upgrade to help you keep your engine running cooler, especially if you plan to tune your car. The only real issue is the cold pipe hose for the DCT owners due to the transmission placement. It's not the fault of the intercooler, nor is it a deterrent from purchasing this item, it's just something to be aware of. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.